something's pretty excited over there. Don't know what it is. I do know I'm going to get rained on. And what I wanted to do, I'm not sure I'm going to get through it, but I'm going to try, is I got some regular wood, you know, fairly uniform. There's a knot in there somewhere, but for the most part, it's just maple. Nothing you know, all that special. And I've got... That chain right there, it's an Oregon LGX, I believe, and it's not war. It's still pretty sharp, pretty good. I used this on the last video where we were cutting tops up and stuff like that. I think what I wanted to do is point out that this is what a chain would be like after some use and after possibly one filing, one sharpening, right? So that's chain number one. Chain number two is a steel brand skip. See? And chain number three is my favorite for out of the box, 33RS. And I think they did a better job than Oregon LGX. Now I'm getting comparable results with a Husky C83. And since I get it for a little bit less, I use C83, but if I was to bring a chainsaw to a get-together and I want to just run that period of time, not have to sharpen it much, I'd probably use a steel RS. It's a little harder, and uh, I think it's probably the best chain out of the box you can buy, just a humble opinion. C83 is real close. I guess it's kind of a toss-up. I've been running C83, so that's where I've been putting my money. But when I wanted to do this test, I went back to steel. I'm going to focus on that log, not on me. So let's get it started and start the process. The chainsaw I'm using is my uh, Hilltop Saw Shop 562. And uh, it's it's mildly warmed up. It's, it's not a hot rod in the sense it's not a ported saw, you know. Not really, but it is a good running saw. chain you know I got reasonable cut speed right and that's a sharpened by me and I can plunge right into that piece of wood and it does not kick back so that's a good baseline for me because that to me is a work saw chain it's one that I can work with and like I said it makes good enough chip you know might not win any cookie cut races, but it cuts fast enough. And 
my God, I can just stick it right into the wood. So there's your chain with a little bit of time on it. So let's see how that compares to two brand new chains right out of the box, Steel RS and the Skip. All right, same deal with the Skip. didn't feel bad at all to me I mean you could feel it growl a little bit grumble a little bit so a little rougher but it went right in so that's an acceptable chain for me no doubt I don't know if it's any faster but it's not bad but you can feel it it's just a little different and then on this I think I got pretty close to the same speed but I had to push quite a bit harder and one thing I noticed was the chips are big Big giant chips come out of there. So, I mean, I get that. I mean, if it cuts that well and I can save some time on resharpening, that makes sense. We'll see what I get on cut times. But I could, I could live with that chain. You know, of course, it's brand new out of the box. I'm a little bit curious to see how it stood up in terms of speed and in, in, uh, uh, to that slightly used chain. So let's go... Do the same thing with a brand new out of the box RS33 full house. But for this test, I wanted to do same brand, so both steel, the RS and the skip, and I wanted them new out of the box, so I went and bought that way. And I think that's the best way to, to test one relative to the other in terms of speed. So let's see what we got. <laughs>
back to the skip. Now I found the RS was a little bit uh, grabbier than both the other two chains. Yeah, uh, I think it would have worked better with my big saw than with this little saw. Um, partly because I was used to pushing. You know, on this little 562, you can't push on it like you can my 572 and the other saw. So I tend to, I stalled that chain where I did not stall the chain on the skip. Interesting. Even though I pushed on it, it just, it didn't have enough bite to stall, I think is what it is. So, let me uh, put the other one back on. All right, back to the skip. <laughs> I can tell you for a fact is uh, the skip I do have to push harder on it seems to me like it's losing its little edge pretty quick so let's go back to the Oregon LGX in a Husky box it's a, the Husqvarna 72 and that's the stuff they sold prior to the uh, C83 and uh, so now both the steel this has got a couple cuts on it right and I don't believe I ran into anything Boy, it doesn't feel like it's cutting as good as it did when I first first ran it. Let me try one more time. Maybe it's me. <laughs> self-feeding. Let me cool this off for a little bit. It's running out of gas. push the bar in like that um, I could not have done that I think with either one of the two steel chains either one so the takeaway for me is I like my uh, LGX in this case but also the C83 out of the box because that feels the same way I mean that felt nice to me and it was easy to bore cut I didn't have to fight it 
I didn't stall it. It was easy to adapt. And interestingly enough for me, I would not have ever suspected this. The steel skip actually was easier for me to adapt uh, to on that saw than the full house uh, 33 RS. And to be fair, I think if I had my 575 or 572, the RS would have walked away with it in terms of feel. But I don't know if you can see it in the video. I don't know how to explain this. But it had that kind of break the crust feel where you push, 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 and all of a sudden, bam, it starts cutting hard. So there's like this transition between where you start pushing and all of a sudden it starts to bite. And uh, what I found was I had to be very careful when it went from being on the crust to breaking through that I didn't stall the chain. I don't know any other way of explaining it. Whereas I know if I had a bigger displacement saw, I would have just powered right through it. The uh, RS, I think, would cut fastest, in my humble opinion. We'll see on the times. But that transition from not cutting to cutting, breaking the crust feel is why it sits on the bottom of the stack in terms of which one I would pick out of the box now. A little bit of education. The, um, the skip chain actually didn't do bad. I could feel it wasn't cutting as fast. I had to push a little harder. Um, the one thing I saw on the skip chain is even in this amount of time, there was a fairly noticeable difference between the first couple of cuts and the later cuts. It felt like I had to push harder and harder. And I don't know if that's reality or perception. It could be that I had to finesse the RS so much that when I went to the uh, skip again, it felt like I had to really push hard. But there's a definite difference in how you have to feed all three of those chains. And the one that's sitting on the saw right now is the easiest one for me to adapt to. And that shouldn't be a surprise. That's what I've been running. You know what I'm saying? It's how I file it. It's the way I like my chains. So that may not be the same for other people, right? Everybody has their own um, way of doing things in what works for me may not work for somebody else. But I'm a little bit surprised. I'm not surprised in that the, uh, the skip Felt like I had to put a little more effort into it to cut as fast. What I am surprised about was how easy the skip fed into the, the log when I was doing the bore cut. And the other thing is, I was pretty sure the RS would cut a lot faster than the, uh, the hand-filed um, Husqvarna 72, which is really an LGX chain, you know. And I can tell you a C83 does a little bit better. I've had enough experience now. So, what I probably should do is I'll put this video out and qualify it as my impressions with a small saw, because that's really just a small saw. My hunch is, and I'll say it again before I put up the camera, is that I would have a different opinion with my 575.